Hi, I'm Seth Worley, the father of the director of Dino Feast, Ava Worley. Ava is nine years old and loves drawing insanely imaginative things, and especially loves dinosaurs. Like, a lot. She drew all the characters in Dino Feast and wrote and narrated the story, pulling zero punches. Like, with an almost four minute runtime, multiple battle sequences, and a surprisingly dark ending, it was apparent right from the start that this film was going to be... ambitious. After recording Ava's voiceover, the first thing I did was I brought it into Premiere and I edited the first assembly of it against music from Triune Digital's Cinematic Scores Pack, which comes with a ton of stuff like stems, stingers, and risers, providing tons of control for those looking to do more extensive music editing. Then I was able to break the thing down into shots using simple text cards describing the key action in each shot. From there, I built a shot list in Airtable and was able to take a step back and assess the daunting scale of work laid out before me, which allowed me to move into the next official phase of production running and hiding. This stage lasted multiple weeks, till eventually my paternal guilt did catch up with me. And it was time to get started. This wasn't the first time animating my kids' drawings. Several years ago, my son Elliot and I made a short called Super Lion. Super Lion has always drawn The rigging and animation on Superline was pretty advanced for me at the time, but Ava's ambitious vision for Dino Feast was going to require me to push my methods and the technology even further. I rigged every dinosaur with its own unique set of controls based on the action required by the story, but the workflow across all of them was essentially the same. I'd first prep the drawing in Photoshop, cutting it out and losing the background, and isolating riggable things like eyes or eyebrows to their own layers. Then I'd bring the PSD into After Effects and give the character its own master composition. Using the puppet tool, I'd specify key control points on the main body. Then I'd painstakingly create and place corresponding null objects for each of these points. Then I'd parent each puppet point to its null object using the two comp expression, allowing the puppet points to follow the null objects wherever they went in the comp. This let me set up some unique rigging controls for the character, like parenting the lower draw point to the middle of the mouth point, so when I rotated the mouth point, the mouth would open and close. I'd parent the isolated layers, like eyes or eyebrows, to these null objects as well. I could then add specific controls to After Effects' as essential graphics features, creating master properties for things like bite, worry, and even run. This gave me full animation control in my shot comps without having to go into the character pre-comp, and it also allowed me to use one master pre-comp for each character across multiple shots without having to duplicate the pre-comp for each shot. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you can't tell, I'm not a trained animator, not in the least. So every shot was very much a groping in the dark process of trial and error. <laughs> until something started working. Wherever there were swarms of things, like birds, compies, or bunnies, I used trap code form with custom sprites, in some cases even integrating ground shadows and dust elements into the sprite to make scenes like this easier to composite. I also used it to render trees whenever I needed lots of trees. That is one big pile of shit. Lighting and compositing this thing, that was admittedly the most fun. I wanted to integrate the drawings into their real-world backgrounds as naturally as possible, so I overused After Effects' CC Light Sweep effect to create moody sweeps of light across their faces with some defining rim light on their edges. Then every shot, every single shot, was composited using Super Comp, part of Red Giant's VFX suite. Super Comp continues to be my secret weapon in After Effects. It allows me to create insanely cool results with a fraction of the time and effort it used to take. There's atmospheric effects, light wraps, glows that automatically wrap around foreground layers, easy one-click color correction for matching black levels and color tones between layers. And in Super Comp, layers communicate upwards, meaning if I add a layer into the background, the light wrap on foreground layers will automatically update. In all my years of working here at Red Giant, Super Comp has personally been the most game-changing product that I've seen us launch. And then for the final touches, finishing it off with sound design by Robbie Stambler, Cameo from our friend Tony Hale. Pleh. 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 So that's how we made Dino Feast. Believe it or not, this project is actually one of the few ways that we've been able to stay sane for the last 12,000 months. That's 2020 as we're recording this. Ava, what are you going to do next? I think next I will make Dino Feast 2. God.
the return of the rewards because they're not really dead. It's a kind of worse They were like, Woohoo! I'm alive again! She's gonna go for like 20 more minutes. I have to animate this now.